How are IT pros meeting the challenge of securing the growing number of IoT devices? Join me and my guest, Brandon Hoffman of NetEnrich, as we explore this critical topic on this episode of Between Two Servers. Welcome to Between Two Servers, the video series designed specifically for IT leaders. I'm Don Pazet, and we know your time is valuable and in short supply, so let's get right to it with my guest today, Brandon Hoffman. Brandon is the CISO at NetEnrich. NetEnrich delivers resolution intelligence to transform your IT operations for smarter business outcomes. My first question, Brandon, how are IT companies coping with more connected devices to manage? Yeah, I mean, the connected device um, situation does become a conundrum for people. I mean, I think, you know, one of the key functions from an IT perspective is knowing everything that's attached. And so I think there's been more of a focus lately on those types of tools, technologies, is understanding what's out there, what's connected, and finding that actually faster. I mean, in the past, we've always been dependent on scans or sweeps or other things to say, hey, something new is here. Uh, but some of the newer technologies, I think, are really helping drive real-time notification and really illuminate kind of, I guess, in a sense, shadow IT, although that has a different, you know, meaning sometimes. But, <laughs> you know, I think, uh, you know, it is a challenge, especially with the remote workforce. Uh, but I think, you know, leveraging the new technologies, even from a cybersecurity perspective, there's there's technologies like attack surface uh, and those that are helping identify those uh, connections more rapidly. Uh, I think that's really the goal, or that's one of the ways that people are tackling that. All right, now let's let's be naive for a moment here, and I'm going to pretend that as a company. I know about all the devices on my network, and I know I'm, I'm adding new IoT stuff, but I'm, I'm on the ball. I know about each and every one of them. Well, with knowledge of the devices means we have visibility into them. We need logging, tracking, information, and that means our logs are growing each and every day. More and more data, just information overload. How do companies stay on top of that? Yeah, logging is specifically a problem. I think to a degree in the past, there's been this notion of let's you know let's limit the logging because storage was a problem. I think in today's world, you know, storage is becoming less and less of an issue. So everybody says, well, let's just keep everything forever because storage is no longer really a problem. That doesn't really solve the problem that you're asking, though. And I think that when you look at logging, um, just like when you look uh, at your technology stack and you take a risk-based approach, as you organize what it is. Uh, that you need from a security perspective or from an IT perspective, um, whether it's uptime or whether it's security, um, taking that risk-based approach or that operational approach is, should I care about this log, right? Is, do you really need the logging from that? So I think there's an effort here to identify, yes, there's new devices, yes, there's new things, but do I really need to keep this log or, you know, or do I not, right? So that way you can kind of have a tactical approach and a strategic some strategy behind do i need to keep these logs or not right so i think that's one way that you can really uh, tackle that problem all right now let's talk about just the the risk of having iot devices at all right there's a ton of things we uh one there's shadow it like you mentioned that we might have employees bringing iot devices in that we don't know about there's two the the vendor's ability to support those devices are they getting updates patches firmware Three, there's exfiltrating data. What, what data are they sending out that we may not have a handle on? So there's, there's a ton of risks to IoT. So what are some of the ways that companies can mitigate the risk of IoT devices? Yeah, I mean, I think that mitigating risk with IoT really begins, as most journeys do, with kind of cyber fundamentals. You know, uh, creating gaps between the network. Uh, I don't want to say firewalls because that sounds a little bit too antiquated. But, you know, creating zones in the network, understanding where things are going to be connected, that's one. Uh, the other one is um, identity. You know, what type of identity is attached to these, the notion of zero trust, starts to come into play a little bit here, although zero trust is a big discussion uh, for another time. Uh, but, you know, making sure that only the devices and people have access to what they should significantly limits the risk of having an IoT device. And then I think there's the notion of threat intelligence, and I think partially uh, threat intelligence and security intelligence from an IoT space is largely overlooked. But there's a lot of really interesting information out there about what is it, what are the risks represented by these types of devices? How are adversaries using them? Uh, how could they be abused? 
And if you have that, you synthesize it with identity and proper network control. I think that really starts from a fundamental perspective to reduce a lot of the risk. Now, we've been speaking about IoT devices kind of generally. What, what are some examples of IoT devices you've encountered out there in the field that you guys have had to, to monitor? Yeah, well, I mean, it ranges quite dramatically and it kind of depends on the business. Um, but it can range anywhere from, you know, like you said, a mobile phone, tablets. It could be people coming in, um, you know, when we were still in offices, people would bring in smart devices that they got for their home and they say, oh, well, let me just try it out here because I know the network. I can connect it to the Wi Fi, little cameras. Even maybe they bought a ring doorbell and they said, oh, before we bring it home, you know, we want to just see how it works. Why not use the company's network? Um, so, really, there's a range of things, thermostats. Um, in fact, one time there was a, we, there was a remodel in, in the kitchen, right? And, and the refrigerators had connectivity and somebody decided we're gonna connect refrigerators to the corporate network. For what reason, we don't know. Uh, but we did find them uh, and we removed them from the network because there was no obviously no business case for that. I'm glad you mentioned cell phones. You know, a lot of people don't think of cell phones as IoT devices, but they really are. And, and then if you extend it out to like a, an Apple Watch, people just think of that as part of their phone, but it's really a, a separate device. So it's easy to lose sight of what actually is IoT. Now, let's, uh, let, let's stay in our naive mode for a moment and assume that as a company, I've managed to completely keep IoT devices out. And so now I want to open it up. I, I recognize these devices are important. What, what advice would you give to a company that is trying to do IoT right, that's trying to implement things securely and safely? Yeah, I think that, you know, there's an opportunity to review the network architecture and look at what are the services that these devices should have access to? What is it that they need? In most cases, what I found is that uh, people who want to, companies who want to allow personal IoT devices on the network, if that's what we're, you know, if that's what the, the zone we're staying in, you know, they're really only just trying to get internet access. So, hey, you know what? Provide a guest network, allow the IoT devices on there, you know, create a zone for that and just and just kind of let it rip because then, you know, there's, there's not as much risk uh, for you. Now, if we're talking IoT devices that are business related, then really you have to dig in deeper and identify strictly what are the services they need, create a pathway to those services, somehow figure out a way to understand what are the vulnerabilities related to those devices in relation to the services they're gonna access. Um, so those are kind of the ways that you really start to look at it if you're taking a fresh approach, that's the right way to do it. Sadly, that's all the time we have. We try to keep these episodes short and to the point. You can find out more information about Brandon and myself in the description below, so be sure to check that out. Thanks to my guest today, Brandon Hoffman of NetEnrich. That's it for now. I'm Dom Pazette, and this was Between Two Servers.